Well, guys, it is another glorious morning in the shop. It is Thursday. It's 48 degrees in here right now. I just lit the fire. And you know how, like, all summer it's been nothing but rain, rain, rain. And, uh, well, we've had rain for the past couple days now, and obviously it's fall time here in New England. And, well, we woke up to this. Yay. So, got about two inches. No big deal. And then we have rain coming for the rest of the night. Well, it's supposed to be sunny in like 40 this weekend, so I guess that's good, right? Anyways, got the ovens on. That was the first thing I did when I came in here, so I'm letting those warm up. They are warming up the phone, and that TV died, so now I need to get a new one. So, let's figure out what to build. gonna have a pretty simple build today it's uh non light bearing it's combat loop Whoop. it's dropping the blue gun on the floor and letting it bounce a couple times uh it's a t blocking and it's a pale horse but there's no trim jig so that's gonna be the hardest part if you haven't figured it out and by these numbers and letters right here it is a po7 by cz with the combat loop that's it so it's a simple black outside the waistband and has been requested to build it on YouTube. And here we go. So um, this holster is going to be going to San Antonio, Texas tomorrow, since I'm going to build it right now and knock it out. It's a quick build. And uh, let's just get everything done. I have stuff in the foam press right now, which means while that's cooling, I can go ahead and uh, knock out a couple vac forms, which is uh, what I'm doing. So I figured I'm going to take all my um, foam pressed orders, one pile and all my vac orders in another pile. I'm going to, every time I do a, uh, um, a vac or a foam one, I'm going to go ahead and knock out a vac. It's going to keep things moving. It's going to double everything and you can't really see it, but that, that bin is pretty much full and that's just from a few hours today. So, which is nice, but like I said, it's been snowing. Snow turned to rain. It is a sheet of ice, so I didn't leave the driveway today because it's not worth it. So, um, but anyways, let's get this done. Let's get it knocked out. Let's get it in the mail because it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. And we'll move on to the next one. And I kind of have a, um, not really a surprise, but I have an idea that I saw a trend kind of on Facebook and I, I want to get in on it. And I want your guys's opinions on it and it requires donations actually you know what it doesn't require a donation because regardless of what we ended up doing or what we end up doing i'm going to be donating my money anyway to this cause so uh we're going to talk about that later on if you're interested in it let me know because once this is done i'm going to say it which will probably be the end of the video and this is going to be a quick video so let's get it done and let's have a chat so the hardest part about doing this right here is going to be mounting this to this. So when you do this, just keep this in mind. Yes, this is somewhat eh, but this takes a little bit of um, concentration. You can't just like throw it on here. Uh, you have to put it in the right spot because we know we're going to want it in this area height wise, but you have to be good left to right. So if we go too far to the right, we're gonna cut it off when we trim it too far to the left, it's gonna be in the RMR optic cut area and we don't want that. So well, what I try to do is, I mean, I know the optic comes to about here on these, obviously you can't go past the ejection port, so we're not gonna worry about that. But we want this so that it comes down because if you notice on pale horse molds, he just goes straight up, which is absolutely awesome. And that allows you to have any RMR on there. But what we need to do is we need to place this here and then we need to block underneath it and block underneath it so it doesn't do the old wobble while it's in the vacuum press. But we have to have the tape tight enough so it doesn't wrap under it and then you can't get this out at all. So that will be the longest part. But with the amount of stuff that I have already cut, it really sh probably shouldn't be an issue. So we got, oh God, look at that. 
Oh, it's off just a, just a little bit. So baby, we'll uh, cut some. I got some new dowels in because I got some new blue guns. So what I'm going to do, so I'm gonna grab this dowel that if you weren't aware, every time you buy a blue gun, it comes with a dowel. How freaking cool is that? So I'm gonna put this up here and you technically you could do whatever you want. You could use a straight edge or whatever, but I'm gonna put the blocking there, hold that in place. I'm gonna grab my pen and just mark as close as I can. And I'm going to cut it right there on the bandsaw. I cut either on the line or give it a little bit extra material. That way, if I need to sand it, I could always take material off because I can't add it. But as you can see right there, that is like perfectly perpendicular to it. And uh, we are ready to go. Perpendicular as in this piece. So this is parallel to the floor. And that's all I care about. Now, if you notice, we got a little bit of dip, which means I need to put blocking right there. That's the same height as this, which probably, nope, that won't work. Let's see here. And then we're going to adjust it afterwards. Actually, that might work. Uh, let's see here. Nope, too much. Ooh, that's a perfecto. All right, so before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and take a small piece of tape. And that is just to hold that in place as I drop everything. Gravity's really working against me today. All right, that I'm going to keep where it is, except for when I blow it away. All right, and let's line this up to where we need it to be. Like I said, well, we're not going to go too far over. Our line's going to be probably right about here, which is good there. And then that is going to be cut right around here. So that looks like it'd be perfect. I'd buy that for a dollar. All right, so then we got that there. And the easier way to put these on is actually upside down. And that looks like it'll be no problem because you can also use that as a thumb, uh, not, not as a release, but to apply pressure to pull it out as well. I've seen people do that. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, there's something in the vac world called tenting. Tenting is a royal pain in the caboose. And what you want to do is pull it tight and make it so it doesn't go under. That one went under a little bit, so I'm gonna actually lift that and do it again. But if you pull it tight, it does not give the Kydex the opportunity to go underneath it. And that is when we have issues, is when the Kydex goes under. Right. And then same thing with up here. Yeah, it may look ugly on the inside, but it is what it is. And try to stay away from the actual trigger guard area, but as you can see, I'm going to be putting it down like that. And then what I actually do is I'll cut it. That way that's still clean. And then same thing on this side. Do like a little X gonna give it to you all right get this in here and we'll knock that out and one very important thing you see how it's no longer parallel we got to fix that a little bit there we go right there and so it's, it wants to do that so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape move it over I'm going to put it down like so. This is to flatten the tape on top. And then all the drill points we want access to. And there we are. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's knock that out. This is going plain black. That's right hand. Suppressor height sights, which are built into this, which is awesome. And that's all she wrote. So let's go ahead. I'm going to cut a piece of, actually. It's always good to cut a little bit more than what you actually need because there is shrinkage like in a cold pool and you want to be able to create that seal. So let's throw this in the press and let's get this ready. Well howdy. First things first, 
Blow it off. Blow off that, and blow this off as well. I don't have a dust collection system yet. It is coming, definitely, because I'm sick of sweeping. And with this being done, I no longer need this. I'll take that out of the way. I'll remove one of these. And this looks big enough, but generally what I'll do is I'll loosen all of it, make it really big, and then tighten it around the mold like so. Before the mold goes in, I'll just do it here. It really doesn't matter. I will hold the blocking. blow all the dust and crap and FOD. In my old uh, work, we call it FOD. We used to build electronic weapon systems, so FOD would be foreign objects and debris. And we don't need to go too tight on this because we overbuilt this, so let's just do that. All right. And we have 95 seconds left, so that's gonna come out and then it's going on there, you know the deal. Then we're gonna go ahead, do a rough cut on the bandsaw, which I still haven't changed the blade because I have maintenance I'm gonna do on it and it's gonna take a lot longer than five minutes to do it and that's why I really don't wanna do it because I just, I don't wanna. That means I gotta take the wheels off, I gotta put new rubbers on, I gotta do all that fun stuff. So I will probably do that this weekend because this weekend's gonna be a balls to the wall thing. But anyways, one minute left. Let's just do it. Do a little sucky sucky. Next step to do is we got to make it holy, baby. So uh, not a lot. There's only going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine holes in here. No big deal, right? But what we need to do is uh, we're going to drill it, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut around the outside. Since I stopped investing in trim jigs, since I got the machine those Christmas cakes are leaning on, and... Um, Pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own trim jigs out of um, half inch MDF or birch wood with nut certs or the epoxy. So, um, but honestly, that saves me a lot of money per mold. But um, I also have to worry about that machine later. But anyways, we're going to go ahead do this by hand. We have this, and it's a lot easier. You actually don't even need this, but it's a lot easier to. Um, do that when it's not non, when it's non light bearing no lights makes it so much easier because you can obviously see the outline that you need to do so um let's make it holy then let's cut it i like to do it in that order because if you cut it it gets a lot more flimsier because this ridge isn't around anymore and that ridge gives it a lot of strength so drill it first then cut it Countersink bit. Like I always say, nobody likes a dirty hole. Bada bing. Very important, clean this right here. You don't want the dirt getting in the uh, starting to melt plastic. There we go. This is the boring part, but you have to watch it. If a lot of smoke starts happening, you've held it for too long. If you hold it too close, it's gonna melt it pretty damn quick too far away, it's gonna take a long time. I try not to hold it in one spot. I like to flip it and roast my kydex evenly. I like to bend it, start flapping it. I guess I get both sides. And once I get a good consistent bend, throw it in, hold it, and then shut your machine off. 
and I'll go ahead and cool it. As you can see right there, that is plenty of room for suppressor height sights. So let's go ahead, trim it. But even though I've been doing this for the better part of a decade, and I have made tens of thousands of taco style holsters, I still like to draw it. Even though I know exactly what it's gonna look like, I still like to do this. So I don't know why, but I like to. Now these pencils, you can get them at uh, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, anything like that. They come in blue as well. I have it right here. I like to use the blue a lot. The reason why I'm using the white right now is I couldn't find the blue, but I just found it. Go figure. Uh, let's see here. Draw a line parallel to the trigger guard. I'm going to stop right here and go from body line to the bottom of the hole. You can literally do it. You could do a squiggle, half of Africa, whatever you want. All right. This right here, this is going to be the sweat shield. And then we're going to come down. So depending on the situation, I'm either going to do this part on this side or I'll come over and I'll do it there. So I'll probably cut it on this side because I know where this is. Because the last thing you want to do is you want to be at this point and then you cut half of this off and then you lose your strength, you lose a lot of stuff, then it just looks stupid. So I'll leave that part right there like so. That looks pretty good. All right, and we know... That, that is absolutely perfect. So we're gonna take this, come straight down. So it still covers it just a, a wee little bit, like so. And then I don't keep dual sweat shields unless it's uh, specified. So we're gonna come up a little bit, right? But then you have this, I don't wanna do it down here. So let's make a little, do it right there. So you got that little bit of a pocket for that to go into, it'll sit just like that. And that is our shape. Uh, for the love of God, don't cut this out on the bandsaw, cut the outer edge and then go in with a cutting wheel and cut that. So let's go ahead, <laughs> let's do it. Again, this bandsaw is about as sharp as a two by four. So bear with me and my light went out. Okay. Now, some of you are probably like, hey, you Italian, why didn't you finish cutting the optics cut? Well, I'm going to tell you why. The bandsaw, that blade is a quarter inch thick. Doesn't want to do this, right? This saw is so whittle, right? So that why, that why, that's why we're going to use that to go ahead and finish this cut. So let's just do it.
while I was waiting for the countdown on the Kydex in the oven, I actually went ahead and already grabbed all the hardware that we needed. So, uh, the only thing left to do is find something to wipe it down with. Wait a right where I threw it. And this is just uh, REM oil. These pencils are water soluble. So any solvent or water, water soluble, will take them right off. And obviously because Kydex has a grain to it, every now and then I find myself having to use a brush. This one is brass, doesn't mark it up. Um, I also have a nylon brush, but that is somewhere else. So um, we'll clean this up real quick. Inside and out, there's a lot, of tra uh, a lot of trapped dust gets in there. So I will hit this also with 120 PSI on the uh, compressor. So there we go right here. Like I said, I'm still working on the lights in here, so bear with me right there. But there it is, so let's put the hardware in and get it going. And here we are, it, not that much. Generally, if I have a trim jig, uh, before I fold it, I'll actually throw this hardware in because it's a lot easier to do when, <laughs> when it's not folded. Come on now. There we go. Go in your hole. Your hole is your home. Or whatever Happy Gilmore says. Here we go. R.I.P. Bob Barker. All right, let's get this in here. These are all the same exact length for everything. Uh, those were quarter inch posts. That's quarter inch uh, rubber spacers. And these are 0.4375 screws. And I put them so that they're just flush coming out the back. And it's usually where there's pretty good retention. Also depends on the, um, the particular mold. So like, see, I'd go a little bit tighter on that one, but that one, whoop, that one feels, that feels really good as it sits. But like I said, I'd go a little tighter. Now, if you, then this is the reason why I always do dual. If you go tighter on this one, it's gonna angle it on the trigger guard and you're actually gonna get more retention and as an inside the uh, outside the waistband that's absolutely perfect for me again i'm going to mount this upside down and i'm going to show you a couple reasons why we're going to do that i'm going to go ahead and throw this right here and just get it started like growing up i always used to do um erector set and uh connects and stuff i wasn't really a legos kid i was more connects and erector and, uh, you know, I remember building a helicopter with my father when I was like, I don't know, three or four. And he told me one piece of advice that I always, always repeat to myself when I'm building things. And that's don't tighten everything until all of them are in. So we're going to tighten these up. We actually go a little bit tighter than normal because the blocking is thick. But I like to do it so where the bolt or the nut, wow, the screw is um, flush to it. There we go. And just a simple lock. If you're not familiar with these types of locks, you can slide it and lock it. Can't open it. Slide it, unlocks it, opens it. And as it's on and you're locked, you got to make sure you're locked because you could pull that. So lock it. But you can use this and snap it off like so and what you could also do is i personally have done it a couple times but you could leave extra material right here heat it up and then fold it over so you actually have a thumb press so again that is a cz po7 right hand on a combat loop that looks good and if you're wondering what these pieces are, these come off, they're removable, and you adjust them to the width of your belt. That way you don't get the up and down movement, you get anything you need in there. So I'm actually gonna pop this one off real quick. And you do that just by tilting it. I'll put it up here and I'll put it on myself so you can see the action on it. All right, here we are right here, bada bing. Like I said, you can take it, you can put your thumb right here. Uh, it is locked, so you can take it, bam, you don't need to. Obviously, you can take it and pull up on it anyway. That feels good. I like it. Doesn't lean out, doesn't do Doesn't do a lot. Now, this is not a carry belt. This is just a leather belt with the uh, the quick lock uh, buckle right here. 
But as you can see, bada bing, and you still have that comfort of pushing off right there. So that is mighty fine. Wiggle, 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 yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was a beautiful build. But I just reread the order and it's for a threaded barrel, which means this is now useless. So I can either cut this off or build it for a threaded barrel. I'm going to go ahead and build it again for a threaded barrel. That is my fault. So technically now I have this available. Um, maybe I'll rob this off of it and just do that. So I'll do that off camera and build it, but that's how it is. You guys seen how I add the, um, uh, the threaded barrel by two pieces of copper pipe that I cut and I place in uh, tape on the mold itself. And then I go ahead and work it into it. So um, a couple measurements right there because you have to line it up with the barrel. No big deal. It just takes a little bit longer. But on that note, so I'll go ahead and redo this. And you know what? Before <laughs> the Loctite hardens, let's get the screws out. Which is also the reason why I use an impact drill because you get that oomph of removing that. So, uh, but that's that sucks. But luckily, you know, this didn't take too long to make. So, um, but let's move on to the next subject. So every year I like to do stuff for, you know, these upcoming months. It's November, Thanksgiving's right around the uh, corner, obviously Christmas right after. And, you know, for every year we like to donate stuff and just do a lot of stuff. A very good friend of mine, my brother, Carl, he just started his own business, but last year we donated like 10 or 15 turkeys. We bought them at the supermarket and then donated them to uh, the food bank for New Hampshire, food bank for families in need. And we raised turkeys here on our little farm that we got going on. And we actually donate one of them and then sell the other. And um, so we've been giving away holiday meals for the last few years. Well, I recently saw on Facebook that one of the things that people are starting to do or uh, a suggestion that people are doing is going to your local elementary school and uh, paying off the hot lunch bills of some of the kids that obviously can't afford it. Uh, obviously, it's not the kid's fault, not really the parent's fault either, but then again, there are some children that can't have uh, hot meals on a cold you know, fall and winter's day. And uh, what I'm going to do is regardless of if I get donations or not, it was actually a Facebook friend of mine, very good friend of mine, one of my old bosses, actually, uh, he had the idea of doing a GoFundMe. And I know that on my website, I can add a donation button or a link directly to the GoFundMe. So I think I'm going to do that. Let me know what you guys want to do. Um, I am going to put it on my website. 100% of the donations that come in, either from YouTube or anything else that, that I direct to the website, is going 100% to the school, and I'm going to see um, if we could pay off a lot. Like I said, regardless of you donate or not, I'm still doing it out of my own personal money, even the YouTube money that I make off of all this stuff. I am going to donate that and to see if I could actually, you know, clean this stuff up because there's a lot of crap you need to worry about around the holidays and uh, well feeding your kids shouldn't be one of the things that you need to worry about so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to put it on the website let me know your guys's thought comment what you guys do uh for like christmas traditions um last year we tried going to a restaurant a whole bunch of us everybody had a hundred dollar bill and we were going to pay with our debit cards for the meal but then everyone was going to tip a hundred dollar bill but schedules and conflicts and everything got involved where we actually couldn't make it happen but we plan on doing something like that in the foreseeable future as well so um if you guys want to donate i'm going to go ahead and put the link one it's in one of these corners i think it's going to be this one and um you go ahead and do it so i'll set that all up and uh we'll see that and i'll even uh like i said i will film doing it and uh, I'll write out the check and give it right to them. It's going to be 100% of the proceeds or the donations is going towards uh, this elementary school. And actually, I know a few people that will do it in their town and do it in another town. And let's see if we could kind of get the ball rolling and spread a little Christmas cheer. I mean, it is the season for giving. So um, I appreciate all you guys watching this. Hopefully you made it this far. This came out beautiful, although I messed it up. So it's going to go in a different bin or I'll, you know, whatever with it. But 
I will see you guys on the next one. And a huge shout out to HolsterSmithandKnifeGets.com. Everything you see here is from their website. Mold is from Pale Horse Concealments. All that information can be found in the description of the video as well. I put that in everything. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. And like I told you, bam, bam. I added the threaded barrel, which was a complete rebuild. But as you can see, that's pretty damn good for eyeballing it. So, again, thank you guys. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.